Ashley Brock, reading Nora Roberts' book, Sea Swept, Chapter 13. They're awful damn happy these days. Cam acknowledged Philip's plight comment with a shrug and kept on whistling while he worked. They were making decent progress on what Cam jokingly thought of as their shipyard. It was hard, sweaty, filthy work. And every time Cam com compared it to laundry detail, he praised God. Though what windows weren't broken were open wide, the air still carried a vague chemical scent. At Philip's insistence, they bought a batch of insect bombs and blasted, blasted place was killing fog. When it cleared, the death toll was heavy. It took nearly half a day to clear out all the corpses. The placement windows were slanted to be delivered that day. Claymont had bitched bitterly about the expense despite the deal he got on him because his brother-in-law managed a lumber company in Cambridge and had sold them to him at cost. He'd been only slightly mollified that the Quins would rip out the old windows and install the new ones, saving him from hiring laborers. And the fact that the improvements to the building would spike the potential resale value pleased him, kept that small delight to himself. They peered off. They peered or punched out rotted boards and hauled them outside to a steadily growing pile of discords. The metal banister of the stairs leading up to the overhead loft was rusted through, so they yanked it out. Claymont was able to finance the proper permit, so they were tossing up a couple of walls to close in what would be a bathroom. Because Cam considered this kind of work a hobby, one he enjoyed, he came home most nights to a clean house and a pretty woman willing to tangle with him whenever time and circumstances permitted, he figured he had a right to be happy. Hell, the kid had even been doing his homework most of the time. He had turned in the much despised essay and was halfway through his prob probation without incident. Cam figured his luck had been running hot and strong for the past couple of weeks. As far as Philip was concerned, it had been the worst two weeks of his life. He had barely spent any time in his apartment, had lost his favorite pair of Mollahee Mal loafers to the gnawing puppy teeth of foolish, had seen the inside of single four star restaurant, and had so much as sniffed a woman, unless he counted Mrs. Wilson at the supermarket, and he damn well didn't. Said he was handling, and juggling, and bouncing details to no one else. So much he's thought about getting blisters on his hands, swinging a hammer, spending his evenings wondering what had happened to life as he'd known it. The fact that he knew Cam was getting regular sex fried the hell out of him, which the board he lipped a grip gifted him with a faint splinter in his thumb. He swore rapidly, What the hell? Why the hell didn't we hire carpenters? As his keeper of our magic funds, you pointed out it's cheaper this way, and Claymont gave us the first month's rent free. We did it ourselves. Camp took the board himself, placed it, began to hammer it in the next stud. He said it was a good deal. Grinned his teeth, yanked out the splitter, sucked on his ink and thumb. I was insane at the time. I was insane at the time. Philip stepped back, hands on his hips, but was still belt, surveyed the area. It was filthy. Dirt, sawdust, piles of refuse, stacks of lumber, sheets of plastic. This was not his life, he thought again. It's the sound of Cam's hammer thudding in time with the gritty rock beat of Bob Seeger that pumped out on the radio. I must have been insane. This place is dumb. Yup. Setting up the city occupants, this is going to devour our capital. No doubt about it. We'll go under in six months. Could be. Philip scowled and reached down for the drug of icy. You don't give a good damn. You don't give a good damn if it bombs, bombs. Cam took the hammer back in his belt, took out his measuring tape. We're no worse off, but if it makes it, if it just bumps along for a while, we'll have what we need. Which is... Cam picked up the next board, eyeballing along its length, and set it over the saw. A business which he can run after the dust settles. He gets himself a couple part timers, off saving watermen. He builds three or four boats here to keep it afloat. He paused long enough. To mark the board run the saw, dust flew, and the noise was awesome. Cam set the power saw aside, heaved the board into place. I'll give him a hand now and then. He'll keep track of his money in. But it ought to give us room to move some. I can get in a few races a year. You can back you can get back to bilking the customers with jazzy ads. Pulled out him. Everybody's happy. Philip cocked his head, scratched his chin. You've been thinking. That's right. When do you figure this slide back to normality going to happen? Camp slapped at the sweat on his forehead with the back of his hand. The faster we get this place up and running, the faster we get the first boat done. Which explains why you've been busting your ass in mine. Then what? I've got enough contacts to line up a second job, even a third. He thought of Todd Barnett, the bastard, even now prominent crew for the one-ton cup. 
yeah, he could finesse Barnett to a boat by Quinn. There were others, plenty of others, who would pay and pay well. I figured my main contribution to this enterprise is contact. Six months, he said. We can handle six months. I want to back to work Monday. Philip told him brace for five. I've got to. Flex in time, so I'll only be in Baltimore Monday through Thursday. It's the best I can do. Cam considered it. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. But you'll be busting ass on weekends for six months. Philip thought more or less. And he hissed out of my One factor, you haven't worked into your plan. Seth, what about him? He'll be here. He's got a place to live. I'm going to use the house as a base. And when you're off breaking records of female hearts in Monte Carlo, Cam's crowd. The hammer harder than necessary on the head of the nail. He doesn't want to be in my damn pocket all the time. You guys will be around when I'm not. The kid's going to be taken care of. And if the mother comes back, they haven't been able to find her. Nothing. I'd feel better if we knew where she is and what she's up to. I'm not thinking about her. She's out of the picture. Has to be, Cam insisted. Remember the look of pasty face terror on Seth's face. She's not going to mess with us. I'd like to know where she is, Philip said again. And what the hell she was to Dad. Can't put out can't put it out of his mind. His way of handling the loose ends was not knock them up together and forget about them. The immediate problem, as he saw, was getting the building in shape, ordering equipment, tools, supplies. If the business was a means to an end, it had to begin. Every day he worked on the building was one day closer to escape. Every dollar he poured into supplies and equipment was an investment in the future. His future. His future. He's keeping his promise, he told himself. His way. The sun beating down on his back and a faded blue bandana tied around his head. He ripped broken shingles off the roof. Ethan and Philip were working behind him, replacing shingles. Seth appeared to be having a fun time, winging the discarded ones from roof to ground, and a satisfying pile was forming below. It was a cool place to be as far as Seth was concerned, up on the roof with the sun beating out, the occasional gull flying by. You could see just about everything from up here. The town, with its straight streets and square yards, the old trees popping up out of the grass, the flowers were okay too, from way... From up here, they were just blobs and dots of color. Someone was mowing. The sound carried up to him like a distant hum. He could see the waterfront with the boats at dock of cruising along the water. A couple of kids were sailing, a little skiff with blue sails. Because he envied them, he looked away toward the docks. There were people shopping or strolling or eating lunch. One of the outdoor tables with umbrellas. Tourists were watching the show, The Crab Pickers put on. He liked to sneer at the tourists when he did. He didn't envy the boys in their neat little boat quite so much. He wished he had the binoculars Ray had given him so he could see even farther. He wished he could sit up here sometime with his sketchbook. Everything looked so clean from up here. The sky and water both so blue, the grass and leaves so green. You could smell the water if you took a good sniff. Maybe that was hot dogs grilling. The scent made his stomach growl with hunger. He shifted a little, looked at Cam out of the corner of his eye. Man, he wished he had muscles like that. With muscles like that, you could do anything and nobody could stop you. If a guy had muscles like that, he would never have to be afraid of anything, anyone, ever in his whole life. Tested his own bicep with his finger. He was far from satisfied. He thought maybe if he got to use tools, he could harden them up. You said I could pull some of them off, says Roma. Later. You said later before. I'm saying it again. It was hot, nasty, tedious work, and Cam wanted it over as much as he wanted to breathe. He already sweated through his t-shirt and pulled it off. His back gleamed damp, and his throat was just desert dry. He peered off another square, watched Seth, send it to You're throwing them in the same place? That's what you said to do. He eyed the boy. The boy Seth's hair stuck out from under an Oreo's filler's cap. They came and ended up behind him when they went to a game the week before. Now that he thought of it, came to think he'd seen the kid without the cap since he got it. The ball game had been an impulse, he thought now. Just one of those things. But it had given him a sharp tug to see the way Seth's eyes had gone huge at the side of Camden Yards. How he... How he sat there, a hot dog clenched and forgotten in his hand as he watched every moment on the field. And it had made Cam laugh and says serious and firm opinion had been, it looks like shit on TV compared to this. He watched Seth send another shingle flying and wondered if he could should teach the kid how to field a ball. Instantly, the fact that he had that thought irritated him. You're not looking where you're throwing them. I know where they're going. If you don't like how I do it, you can throw them down yourself. He you said I could pull some up. Not worth it, can't tell himself not worth the effort to argue. Fine. You want to rip shingles off the damn roof? Here, look. See how I'm doing this? Use the claw of the hammer and... 
I've been watching you for an hour. Doesn't take brains to rip off shingles. Fine. Can't sit between you. You'll do it. You shove the hammer and assess your hand. I'm going down. I need a drink. Cam went nimbly down the ladder, trying to assure himself that all ten-year-old boys were snotty assholes, and the more shingles the kid ripped free, the fewer there would be for him to do himself. If he survived the day, he had another Saturday night date with Anna. He wanted to make the most of it. Now there was a woman, he thought, as he grabbed the jug of ice water and glugged some down. Damn near the perfect woman, so it occasionally gave him an uneasy feeling in the gut to think of her that way. It was tough to find the flaws. Beautiful, smart, sexy. That great laugh she let loose so often. Those gorgeous, warm, understanding eyes. The wild spirit of adventure tucked into the practical public servant suits, and she could cook. Chuckled to himself, pulled out another bandana to mop his face. Why, if he was the settling down type, he would snatch her right up. Get a ring on her finger, say the I do's, and tuck her into his house, his bed, on a permanent basis. Hot meals, hot sex, <laughs> conversation, laughter, slow smiles to wake up in the morning. Shared looks that said more than dozens of words. When he caught himself staring at his face, the jug dangled from his fingers. Stupid grin on his face, shook himself hard. Let out a long breath. The sound of baked his brain, he decided. Permanent wasn't his style. Never had been. Marriage, the word made him shudder. Was for other people. Thank God Anna wasn't looking for any more than he was. A nice, easy, no strings, no frills relationship suited them both. To ensure that his mind didn't go hot again, he dumped frigid water over his head. Six months, he promised so, as he started back outside. Six months, and he would start easing himself back into his own world competition, speed, glittering parties, and women who were only looking for a fast stride. When the thought of it fell flat, when the image of it all left him hollow inside, he swore. It's what he wanted, God damn it! what he knew, where he belonged. He wasn't cut out to spend his life building boats for other people to sail, raising a kid and worrying about matching socks. Sure, maybe he'd reach, teach the kid how to fill the grounder, or a pop fly, but that was no big deal. Maybe Anna Spinelli was firmly hooked in his brain, but they didn't have to to be a big deal either, but that didn't have to be a big deal either. He needed room. He needed freedom. He needed to race. His thoughts were boiling as he stepped outside. The aluminum extension ladder nearly crashed on top of him. His hot oath and the muffled scream overheard sounded as one. Sounded as one. When he looked up, his heart simply stopped reading. Set dangled from his fingertips from the broken frame of a window twenty feet above the space of a trio of heartbeats. Cam saw the pattern on the bottom of new high tops, the dangling laces, the droopy socks. Before he could draw the first breath, both Ethan and Philip were leaning over the roof. I'm struggling to reach that. You hold on, Ethan shouted. Hear me? Can't! Panic made Seth's voice then, very, very young. Slip in! We can't reach him from here. Philip's voice was deadly calm, but his eyes, as they stared down her cams, were bright with fear. Put the ladder up. Quick. He made a decision in seconds. Though it seemed like the rest of his life, Cam gauged the time it would take to haul the ladder into place to climb up or climb down where Seth hung. Too long was all he could think, and he moved to stand directly on her side. You let go, Seth. Just let go. I'll catch you. No, I can't. His fingers were raw and bleeding. Nearly gave way as he shook his head fiercely. Panic scared him up his spine like hungry mouth. You won't. Yes, you can. I will. Close your eyes and just let go. I'm here. Cam planted his legs apart and ordered his own trembling. I'm right here. I'm scared. Me too. Let go. Do it. He said so sharply that Seth's fingers released on instinct. It seemed as though he fell forever. Endlessly. Sweat poured down Cam's face. Air refused to come into Seth's lung. Though his eyes stung from sun and salt, Cam never took them off the boy. His arms were there. Braced and ready. Seth tumbled into them. Cam heard the explosion of breath. His. Seth's. He didn't know which as they both fell heavily. Cam used his body to cushion the boy. Took the hard ground on his bare back. Both. But in an instant, he was up on his knees. He spun Seth around. Plashed his boy against him. Christ. Oh, Christ. Is he all right? Ethan shouted from him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Are you okay? I think. Yeah. He's shaking badly. His teeth chattering. When Cam loosened his hold, and I was looking into his face, he saw deadly pale skin. Huge glassy eyes. He sat down on the ground. Pulled Seth into his lap. Pushed the boy's head between his knees. Just shaking up, he called to his wife. Nice catch. Philip sat back on the roof, rubbed his hands over his clammy face, figured his heart rate will get back to normal in another year or two. Jesus, Ethan, what was I thinking of? Sending that kid down for water. 
Not your fault. <laughs> Open the steady, both of them. He's in squeeze, Phillips. Or nobody's fault. He's okay. We're okay. He looked down again. He tended to tell Cam to get the ladder. But what he saw was the man holding on to the boy. Cheek pressed to the top of the boy's hair. The ladder could wait. Just breathe. Came on. Just take it slow. You got the wind knocked out of you. That's all. I'm okay. But he kept his eyes closed. Terrified that he would throw up. Now, totally humiliate himself. His fingers were burning. But he was afraid to look. When he finally sank in, that he was being held, held close, wasn't sick pain. It was shuddering disgust that raced through him. It wasn't shuddering disgust that raced through him. It was gratitude and a sweet, almost desperate relief. Came close to his eyes as well. Yeah. And it was a mistake. He saw that falling again, falling and falling. But this time, it wasn't quick enough or strong enough. He wasn't there at all. Fear, been under fury. World sat around till their faces were closed and shook him. What the hell were you doing? What were you thinking of? You idiot. You could have broken your neck. I was just, his voice hitched mortifying him. I was only, I didn't know. My shit was untied. I must have stepped wrong. I only, but the rest of the words were muffled against Cam's hard, sweaty chest as he was pulled close again. He could feel the rapid beat of Cam's heart. He heard thunder in his ear. Close to size again, slowly, testingly. His arms crept around the hole. It's all right, Cam murmured, ordering himself to calm down. It wasn't your fault. You scared the shit out of me. His hands were trembling. Cam realized he was making a fool of himself. Deliberately pulled Seth back and grinned. So I was the right. Seth managed a weak smile. I guess it was pretty cool. That's the fine. Because they were both feeling awkward. He's back suddenly warming. Good thing you're puny yet. You had any weight on you. You might have knocked me out cold. <laughs> Shit. Seth said because he couldn't think of anything else. Must up your hands some. Cam frowned. Consideringly at the bloody torn finger. Guess we better get the rest of the crew down and fix you up. It's nothing. It hurt like fire. No use having you bleed to death because his hands still weren't. Quite steady. Cam made quick work of lifting the ladder into place. Go on and get the first aid and kick. You know, it looks like Phil was on the mark when he made us buy the damn thing. We might as well use it on you. As he watched Seth go inside, out of sight, Cam simply lowered his brow to the side of the ladder. His stomach continued to jump, and a headache he hadn't been aware of until that instant roared through his temples like a freight train. You okay? He then put a hand on Cam's shoulder the minute he was on the ground. I've got no spit. My spit's dried clean up. Never been so fucking scared. That makes three of us. Philip glanced around because his knees were still wobbly. He sat on one of the rungs of the ladder. How bad are his hands? Does he need a doctor? Fingers are ripped up some. It's not too bad. The sound of a car pulling into the loose gravel lot. He turned to see who it was. And his glittering stomach sang, Oh, perfect. Sexy social worker at three o'clock. What's she doing here? Ethan pulled his cap down and over on his head. He didn't have him wound around when he was sweaty. I don't know. We have a date tonight. Nine till seven. She's going to have some damn female thing to say about us having the kid up there in the first place. She won't... So we won't tell her, Phil murmured, even as he shot Anna, a charming, welcome home. Well, this brightens the day. Nothing better than to see a beautiful woman after her tough morning's work. Gentlemen, she only smiled when Philip took her hand and brought it to his lips. Amusement rippled through her. Three men, three brothers, three reactions. Philip's polished welcome, Ethan's vaguely embarrassed nod, and Cam's irritated scrout. And there was no doubt each and every one of them looked outrageously male and appealing and sweating tool belts. I hope you don't mind. I wanted to see the building, and I did come bearing gifts. There's a picnic hamper in my car. Men food, she added, for anyone who'd like a lunch break. That was nice of you. Appreciate it. He didn't shift his feet. I'll go fetch it out of your car. Thanks. She surveyed the village. building, tipped down around its wide rim sunglasses, studied it again. All she could think was that she was glad she dressed casual for this impromptu visit in roomy jeans and a t-shirt. There's no way to go in there, she imagined, to come out clean. So this is it. The start of our empire. Philip began having just figured out that he could take her on a tour around the outside and give Cam enough time. Clean Seth up and shut him up when the boy came out. The collar was back in his face. We were just filthy with sweat, dirt, and the blood that he smeared on his cheeks from his fingers. His white, just do a t shirt, was in the same condition. He carried the first thing kit like a banner. Alarm shot in Anna's eyes. She was rushing towards Seth, taking him gently by the shoulders before. Either Cam or Philip can think of a reasonable story. Oh, honey, you're hurt. What happened? Nothing. Cam replied, he just, I fell off the roof. Seth piped up. He calmed down while he was inside. Had gone from weak, kneeled to wildly proud. 
Fell off the shock to numbness, Anna. Anna instinctively began to check for broken bones. Seth stiffened and squirmed, but she continued grimly until she was satisfied. My God, what are you doing walking around? She turned her head long enough to aim a furious glare at him. Have you called an ambulance? He doesn't need a damn ambulance. It's just like a woman to fall to pieces. Fall to pieces? Keeping a protective hand on Seth's shoulder, she rolled on. Fall to pieces. The three of you are standing around here like a herd of baboons. The child could have internal injuries. He's bleeding. Just my finger settled them out, admiring them. Man, was he going to be the hot topic in school to come to Monday? I slipped off the ladder coming down, but I caught myself on the window frame up there. He pointed it out helpfully while Anna's head spun from the, from the height and Cam told me to let go and he'd catch me. And I did. And he did. Damn kid won't say two words half the time. Cam muttered, but the other half he won't shut the hell up. He's fine, he said, lifting his voice. Just knocked the wind out of him. She didn't bother to respond. Only sent him one long, fumigating look before turning back to smile and said, Why don't I take a look at your hands, honey? We'll clean them up and see if you need stitches. She lifted her chin, but the shade of glasses didn't quite control the heat in her eyes. Then I'd like to speak with you, Cameron. I'll bet you would. <laughs> he wobbled as she led Seth toward her car. Seth found he didn't mind being babied a bit. It was a new experience to have a woman fuss over him, over a little blood. Her hands were gentle, her voice soothing, and his fingers throbbed and stung. It was a small price to pay for what now seemed a glorious venture. <sighs> it was a long way down, he told her. Yes, I know. Thinking of it only made the ball bigger in her stomach. You must. You must have been terrified. I was only scared for a minute. Bit the inside of his cheek so, she wouldn't whim so he wouldn't whimper as she carefully bandaged him. Some kids would have screamed like a girl and wet the pants. He wasn't sure if he screamed or not. The part was a blur, but he checked his jeans and knew he was okay there. And Cam, who's pissed off? You think I kicked the damn ladder out from under me on purpose? Frank came up. He yelled at you? <laughs> he started to expand on that, but there was something about her eyes that made it hard to tell an all an outlaw for a minute. Mostly, he just got goofy about it. I think I'd had my arm racked off the way he was carrying on, patting on me and stuff. He said, but remembering the warm glow in his gut of being held close, safe time. Some guys, you know, they can't take a little blood. Their smile softened. She reached up to brush his hair back. Yeah, I know. Well, you're in pretty good shape for a guy who likes to dive off roofs. Don't do it again, okay? Once was enough. Glad to hear there's fried chicken in the hamper, unless they've eaten it all. Yeah, man, I could eat a dozen pieces. He started to race off, then he felt a tug on his conscience. It was only a... Another rare sens sensation, and it caused him to turn back at me in her eyes. Cam said he'd catch me, and he did. He was cool. Then he ran toward the building, shouting for Ethan to save him some damn chicken. Anna only sighed. She sat there on the side of the passenger seat, while she put the first aid kit back in order. When the shadow fell across her, she continued to tidy up. She could smell him, sweat. Man, the faint undertones of the soap from his morning shower. She knew his scent so well now, and the way it would mix with her own, that she could have picked him out of a room full of men had she been handcuffed and blindfolded. And even, and though it was certainly true that she'd been curious about the building, it was really only a handy excuse to drive over from Princess Anne to see him. I don't suppose there's any point in me telling you that boy says H shouldn't be going up and down extension ladders unsupervised i don't suppose there is or that boys his age are careless often awkward and clumsy he's not clumsy came said with me he's agile as a monkey of course he added with a sneer in his voice the rest of us are baboons so that fits she closed the first aid kit rose handed him apparently she agreed. however accidents happen no matter how careful you are no matter how hard you try to prevent them that's why they're accidents she looked at his face. The irritation was still there, she noted, with her, with circumstances, and all that underlying anger that never seemed to fade completely away was very, very close to the surface. So, she said softly, how many years of your life did that little event shape off? He let out a couple of decades. But the kid handled himself. He turned a little to look back toward the building. It was then that Anna saw the smears of blood on his back. Smears, she realized after her heart's first leap that had come from Seth's hands. The boy had been held, she thought. And the boy had held on. Cam turned back, caught his mind. What? Nothing. Well, since I'm here, and you're all eating my food, I think I'm entitled to a tour. How much of this business are you going to have to put in one of your reports? I'm not on the clock, she told him, more sharply than she intended. I thought I was coming to pay a visit to friends. I didn't mean it that way, Anna. Really? 
She stepped around the car door and slammed it at her back. Damn it, she had come to see him, to be with him, not to fit in an unannounced home visit. What I will put in my next report, unless I see something to the contrary, is that it's my opinion that Seth is bonding with his guardians and they with him. I'll make sure you get a copy. I'll take a rain check on the tour. You can get the hamper back to me at your convenience. She thought it was a great exit, as exits went straight around the car while she tossed off her lines. Temper was flaring, but just under control. They grabbed her as she reached for the car door and spoiled it. She around. And swinging, but her fist slid off his damp chest and rum ruined the impact. Hands off! Where are you going? Just hold on. Hold it a minute. I don't have to hold anything, and I don't want you holding me. She shot that one with one. God, you're filthy! If you just be still and listen. To what? You don't think I get it? You don't think I've clued into what you saw, what you thought when I pulled up? Oh, hell, here comes the social worker. Close ranks, boys. She jerked back. Well, fuck you! Could have denied it. Could have taken the I don't know what you're talking about approach, done an extra job of it, but her eyes had the same effect on him as they had on set. It wouldn't let his tongue wrap itself around him. Okay, you're right. It's a knee jerk. At least you have the decency to be honest. The depth of the hurt infuriated her as much as it surprised her. I don't know what you're so frosted about. <laughs> Don't you? She tossed back her hand. Then I'll tell you. I look at you as a soul man who also happens to be my lover. You look at me and saw a symbol of system you don't trust or respect. Now that's, now that that's cleared up, get out of my way. I'm sorry. He dragged the bandana off because his head was splitting. You're right again. And I'm sorry. So am I. She started opening. Will you give me a damn minute here? Instead of reaching for her again, he dragged his hands through his hair. It wasn't the impatient tone that stopped her, but the weariness of the gesture. All right. She let go of the door and You got a minute. He didn't think there was another woman on the planet. He explained himself to more than the one watching him now with a faint frown. We were all a little shaken up right then. The time it couldn't have been worse. God damn it, my hands were still shaking. He hated to admit that. He hated it. To get out of some control, we turned away. Paced off. Paced back. I was in a wreck once, about three years ago, Grand Prix. Hit the chute. Miss Judge went into a hill hell of a spin. The car was breaking apart around me. Worst fair is invisible fire. Vapors catching hold. I had this flash of myself burned to a crisp just for an instant. But it was vivid. He balled the bandana up in his hand and pulled it out smooth. I'm telling you, Anna. I swear to you. Standing under that kid, watching his shoelaces dangle, was worse. Hell of a lot worse. How could she hold on to her anger? Why couldn't he see that he had such a huge woe? Of love to give if he would only let himself dip into it freely. He said that he would probably hurt her, but she hadn't known it would come so soon. But from this direction, she hadn't been looking in the right direction. She hadn't known she's fallen in love with him. I can't do this, she said half to herself and wrapped her hands around her arms to warm them. The chill penetrated, even though she stood in streaming sun. How many steps did she take in toward love? She wondered how many could she take back to save herself. I don't know what I was thinking of. Being involved with you on a personal level only complicates our mutual interest in the childhood. Don't back off from me, Anna. <laughs> He experienced another level of fear now, one he never felt for. So we take a few wrong steps. We get the mountains back. We're good together. We're good in bed, she said him blink when she saw what might have been hurt flashing as a only only No, she said so she stepped toward him. Not only, but I've got something for you inside me, Anna. He forgot his hands were dry he's laid them on his horse. I haven't used it up yet. The same with you. So, it's the one of the first times I haven't wanted to rush to the finish line. They would still get there, she realized. She would have to be prepared for him to reach that line and cross it ahead of her. Don't mix up who I am and what I am, she told him quietly. You have to be honest with me, or the rest of it means nothing. I've been more up front with you than I've ever been with a woman before, and I know who you are. All right. She laid a hand on his cheek when he bent to kiss her. We'll see what happens next. End of chapter 13.